Okay, today is the day to carry out another test. We're going to be looking at how much solar you actually need to run a cartridge. In this case, an 80 litre Waco, uh, older type, but it's been a very reliable fridge. Um, so very overcast today, as we can see. And we're going to go and have a look at our setup now and run through the test. Okay, so here is our test. Um, what we're going to do is pretty much a worst case scenario with our overcast day that we have here. Um, we're going to see how much power or what size solar panel we need to run this big old 80 litre Waco um, 12 volt fridge in the overcast conditions. So um, nine times out of ten everyone assumes it's always going to be sunny and uh, fine and dandy but um, a lot of the times it's overcast there's no full sunlight um, or you're underneath a shady tree so your panel's getting a bit of shade and doesn't put out its maximum so um, we're actually going to see how much power this fridge uses over the next three or four hours and we're going to simulate a real life <coughs> um, calculation in that we're going to uh, open the fridge every half an hour for 30 seconds, close it and we'll keep doing that for three hours and we will get a very accurate uh, measurement of how much power that uh, fridge requires and how much power our solar panel is putting out in an overcast situation so not full sunlight now the panel we have here is um, the one that is on top of my workshop roof it is a 170 watt um, X rooftop solar panel it's about um, five years old and um, it's one of the better quality ones it was just removed so they did an upgrade removed the old panels bigger system newer panels and uh, these panels you can pick up from ten dollars to thirty dollars each there's just um, thousands of panels laying around now uh, going to waste due to um, rooftop solar upgrades and of course when they come along at the right price I grab them because they are good for projects like this um, like I said the one I have on my rooftop I use to test all my charge controllers and everything before they go out on site so as I know they are working correctly now the good thing about the um, Epeva tracer um, not only it's cheap price but um, we have our solar input our battery and we also got a load output and when it's coupled up to the MT50 that can tell us the power coming in from the solar how much the load is using which is our fridge and if the battery is actually receiving any energy from the solar or the load is taking more than the solar can provide so we're on one amp in front at the moment roughly and that'll go up and down as the sun goes behind the clouds and then comes out um, but what you'll see, see it drops down to 0.7 now because the sun's gone behind a cloud. But what you'll see, um, if we are consuming more power than we're providing um, from the solar panel like that, it goes into the negative. And the sun's just come back out again as we can see. So um, this is exactly what we need because we can then go through in three hours see how many watts the solar panel has put into the battery in those three hours um, and how much or how many watts the fridge has taken out of our battery in the last three hours so we'll give it three hours every half an hour I'll open the door 30 seconds close it to simulate a real life situation um, because people open and close fridges all the time to get their drinks or their meat or whatever and from this we're going to be able to calculate um, on an overcast day 
not a full Sunday, an overcast day, worst case scenario, um, if 170 watts of solar is good enough to keep this fridge running. What we also have to take into account that the fridge is going to be running overnight. So we're going to want a bit extra from the solar so as we can actually recharge the battery in the morning and continue to run the fridge. So um, actually I'll leave it as a 24 hour test, that's what we'll do. A full 24 hour test, um, let it run overnight and the battery will get drained down of course and then in the morning hopefully it starts charging up and uh, we'll be able to say with quite some accuracy what size solar panel you're going to need to run this fridge 24 hours a day in overcast conditions. So um, rather than make a long video, I might come back in three hours, see how we're doing, run through our in and out power consumption and see if we're in front or behind and then we'll let it continue on for the other 21 hours. So uh, we'll come back in three hours and have a look, see how we're going. Okay, just a little update. It hasn't been three hours yet. The bridge has been going flat out. We're still waiting for the uh, temperature get down to minus eight, which I have it set at. It's currently down to minus four. And I must say, I am very impressed with this old Waco fridge. It's a big 80 litre fridge. The temperature is coming down quite nicely. It's an older one. Um, but it's still performing very well and the thing only draws 3.4 amps 13.5 volts <coughs> also impressed with our old second hand solar panel um, 0.48 amps going into the battery and the other 3.5 going into the fridge <coughs> um, because the uh, tracer is designed to power the load with the solar first and then the extra goes into the battery but uh, what's really good about it we'll come out here and have a look it is now completely overcast the sun should be there and I can shine the camera at it and it really is quite dark so um, there isn't a spot of blue sky to be seen anywhere a full overcast day and um, our old $20 second hand solar panel is keeping up with the fridge <coughs> but that's old fridge 3.4 3.5 amps so this old girl it's a big 80 litre as I said and it's hardly drawing anything at all. Unbelievable. Good old Waco. So if you want an efficient fridge, I reckon one of these would be the go if you can find them. I picked this one up for $200. Very, very cheap. Broken latch, but never bothered replacing it. Um, the only thing that was wrong with it, it, it wouldn't switch off. It just kept on getting colder and colder. Thermostat issue. Um, but lo and behold, good old Waco put a spare thermostat in behind this cover. You take this cover off, you can see the spare one wrapped up and cable tied to the board. Unplug the original, plug the spare one in, and now this fridge works perfect. So 200 bucks, bargain. Especially when it's drawing very, very little power, really. Alright, um come back in our three hours see how we go okay so now we really are at a worst case scenario because it's raining oh, extremely overcast so um, the old solar is in a worst possible case scenario the fridge has reached it's minus 8 which I have it set at now we are empty so it's going to cycle a bit more than it would if it had food and drinks in it 
Um, our bats voltage to get it down in this very horrible overcast wet rainy day. Um, it's at 13.1 and at the moment we're only putting 0.3 amps in from our solar panel. But the fridge is off so now we're charging the battery. Uh, we're going to let it go. Um, not many people are going to go camping in this weather. So this would probably simulate you being parked under a nice big shady tree. And um, we'll see if our 170 watt panel is going to keep up to the uh, fridge cycling on and off now. The cycle is about um, every 15 minutes for 5 minutes. This one, um, that's with food in it. I'm not sure what it's going to do empty. So we'll leave it run and see how it goes. Uh, it's not like we're paying anything for the power we're using. And um, we'll come back every now and then, see what happens. Hopefully the rain might take off, the skies might clear a bit, but I doubt it. I think it's here for the day. So, yeah, we're in a worst case scenario here. So we'll see how we go. Okay, been three hours now. Um, surprisingly, our battery is still full has filled up. The fridge only comes on about once every half an hour. It's actually on at the moment. Because we went to minus 7 and it's set to minus 8. Now it has been raining pretty hard. The sun has just come out in a gap in the clouds but as you can see there it has been raining fairly hard. Still overcast but we've got blue gaps here and there now. So it's starting to clear up. So it really was a bad day for a solar experiment. However, that's a good thing because we know so far that 170 watts is more than ample to run this big 80 litre fridge. So you can run your fridge and um, some LEDs as well, I would think. So, um, yeah, not doing too bad now. A little something about our tracer when you buy these um, new the cutoff voltage to the load is 10.6 volts I've raised that to 11.2 so when our battery drops down to 11.2 volts it will switch the load off and then it will come back on when the battery it is 12.6 volts so that's going to add another couple of years to your deep cycle battery life, believe it or not, because we're not pulling it down hard to our 10.6 volts. They say you can, 11.2 um, will give you an extra couple of years. Uh, so we should get roughly five to six years out of that battery instead of the two to three we would if we pulled them down really hard every day, which of course we don't every day because we don't go camping every day. So, so far very good. Um, I'm just now going to let it run and we'll come back tomorrow morning, see what's going on, how our battery looks and um, all that sort of jazz. But as it stands at the moment, um, our battery is full, extremely close to it and uh, that has been with heavy rain most of the afternoon. <coughs> Alright, uh, so we'll see you tomorrow morning and uh, we'll see how things look. Okay, it's 7.30 the following morning. Nice sunny day today. The panel isn't receiving direct sunlight at the moment because it's on the west side of the uh, workshop roof. Um, still putting in 4.4 amps to the battery at the moment. The fridge is at minus 8, so it's not running because that's its cut-off temperature. Uh, so, so far overnight everything's looking good. We'll let it continue on until 1, which will be our 24-hour test, and uh, see how things look then. But it would seem that 170 watts, or 175 watts, 175 watt solar panel is uh, more than enough, even on a terrible day like we had yesterday. So I would say if you went a 200 watt panel, um, you would be able to run a nice big fridge like this plus your um, LED lights 
around your camping area or in your camper van and that would be more than enough okay full 24 hour test 14.1 uh, volts in the battery so pretty much still full and I think we can safely say that um, 170 watts is plenty enough even in bad conditions so I would recommend to run a fridge and a couple of lights in uh, nice sunny conditions open sunny conditions where the panel's going to receive full sunlight 120 watt panel would do the job uh, partly cloudy partly shady 160 watts and crap weather if you like going camping in the rain and overcast days and that uh, 200 watts uh, would give you enough to run your fridge and some lights all right hope that was helpful to uh, you people out there and in our next video we are going to have a look and see what kind of a difference there is between a more expensive MPPT charge controller and El Cheapo $12 PWM charge controller. So we'll have two identical systems, two identical setups, two identical batteries, panels etc and loads and we will just be using two different charge controllers. See how we go. Alright, thanks for watching and we'll see you next video.